solid waste and litter abatement committee and have a roll call. Yes, uh, Chairman Trina. Here. <coughs> Here. Collins. Here. Mrs. Griffin. Present. Mr. Hassan. Here. Mr. Scott. Here. And Mr. Stelly. Here. Everyone's present. Thank you, Kathy. Uh, we're going to receive the report and the recommendations from staff regarding content of the residential solid waste collection and disposal request for proposals. Uh, and I'm going to ask uh, Mr. Bean to uh, bring us uh, into it, and then Mr. Wainwright will give us your proposal. Thank you, Ms. Trimmy. Uh, back on the 17th of March, we came to you as a committee on our recommendations for the RFP for household collection and asked for your input, and you gave it to us. It was uh, a lot of good uh, information exchange, uh, get familiar with what types of issues are at stake and how to structure this in a manner that's suitable for the jury's desires. What I would like to say in this, we, we've got some, I guess you would say, the next round, which uh, we're hopeful that this may, may address every one of the issues that have been brought up. We, we feel like it, it will. Just to sort of philosophically make sure uh, y'all know we were where we were coming from is that in, in any service like this, and this one's tricky, this solid waste is just, it's tough because there's so many variables. Uh, we wanted to do something that was uh, reasonable in terms of uh, ser effective service delivery with no drop off but with reasonable limits. And I know that word isn't uh, popular all the time, but we have revenue limits too. So a lot of what we're coming up with is based on that and looking ahead 10 years and what may happen. So with that, it really helped to get your feedback as to what you would like to see. And so we worked within those parameters. I'm going to turn it over to Alan and what he's going to cover is strictly those things that were more in discussion and not a consensus on. The rest we are going to assume is okay and because there really haven't been any other issues. So I'll let him do that. And of course, if there's something we left out, we, we want to hear about it from the committee. But at this point, I'll ask Alan to go over that latest recommendation. Thank you, Ms. Bean. Alan? Thank you, Ms. Tremmy. Um, we'll go ahead and go into the presentation. We should uh, see if Tom's going to be there. Formats much the same as you've seen a couple times. Good news is it's getting shorter because we're cutting down on the objectives that need to be, like I say, reach a consensus on. Um, we're in the third meeting of our schedule. We're still on schedule. I'm hopeful that coming out of tonight we'll have some uh, appropriate action that will um, keep us on schedule for the uh, 7th of April where we would hope to uh, be in a position to receive permission to advertise uh, the RFP. So with that, I'll get to the few things that I wanted to cover. Um, like Brian, I'd, I'd like to uh, echo, I think, you know, between the last solid waste committee and the fact that we had some uh, good discussion at the police jury meeting on the report really helps us understand uh, <coughs> where y'all would like to go with the contract and with the service. And we hope we've hit all the uh, major points. This list on this slide is really, like I say, this is the one that's getting shorter and shorter if you kind of recall the pattern. Each one of these I'll look at sort of separately uh, next. But there's still some level of service issues. Obviously, you said uh, many, many times we want to try the best of our ability to maintain the service. So I think you'll see that in our uh, latest revisions. Uh, Mr. Scott was um, adamant on the methods of collection. We're trying to address that. The review panel and really the revisions to the uh, manual or the main points we're going to cover tonight. When it comes down to level, the first thing, level of service, really came down to the number of containers per household. Um, I'm going to demonstrate this uh, in a little bit different way than you've seen it a couple times previous. Um, what we're going to propose is it from a can standpoint that there really be a one-to-one -one exchange of cans um, through our discussions you know if you have one can let me let me go back one step this would assume that there's a transition that's only an assumption it's the only one that really uh, adds complication if there's no transition 
obviously these, these things would not come into play. But if there's a transition, we would have your RFP designed in a way that there would be an expectation of a one-to-one -one exchange of cans. So if you have one, you would get one. You have two, you would get two. So that's that grandfather clause. We talked about it in those terms. Uh, really, when we talk about cans, we're talking these cans or containers. We're talking about the approved ones. I think that's a critical component. That's if you've bought a can or two cans or three cans, we would want a one-to-one -one exchange for that. Obviously, we, we've talked about many times that the first can for all residents is was already assumed to be exchanged one way or another. So this is a major component. Uh, that means no one loses a can or a number of cans. Uh, that means a cost uh, to the contract in all reality. Uh, we, would, we would see this process unfolding during the transitional period. And most likely we would see uh, bid process take place where those cans were bought in one package and exchanged in one step at, during the transitional period. New or additional cans uh, would still be basically the way they, they, they are today. You would pay for that can. That's the same exact thing that's going on today. I think it's $61 <coughs> or $62. Uh, we would continue that. That cost would be borne by the resident. The way your contract, last bullet on that slide, on that item, the way your current manual reads, it's unlimited pickup. There's no specification for the number of cans. Uh, I recommend, we're recommending that we just leave that alone. It's worked well. We know, we all know the percentages that are out there today. <clears throat> We've been running with that formula for many, many years. Um, I don't know if this is a proper term, but you kind of are what you eat. So we, that's how many cans uh, that we'll need to service. It's going to change. It's going to vary a little bit, but it is a, uh, a number that we think is in a range that we can handle. For new residential services, and when I say new in this fashion, after the, after the transition, if there were one, say, I don't know, January 15th of 2012, someone builds a new home, a new, you know, they become a new residence. Obviously then we would provide the first can, just like everyone else uh, has gotten over the years, you would purchase <coughs> as a resident your additional cans. Again, there would be no specified limit on the number of cans. That's exactly how you, your documents worded now on that specified limit. Um, maybe there'll be some questions on that, but we'll come back to it. Method of collection was another major point. Um, at this point, we are prepared, and, and, and I guess fundamentally, I agree with Mr. Scott that that service has that form of service that that method has worked quite well for us. Um, I personally managed a contract under other ways, and I think this creates the, less, the least amount of uh, complaints, requests for additional pickups and those things. So I support that method. What we are proposing is to use, Mr. I think Mr. Scott called it a, um, a man truck. As I've talked to some of the industry guys, they, they refer to it, and I think these terms move around a little bit, but semi-automated residential rear loaders, uh, compactors. It's a lot of name for manned, uh, so I think we all know what we're talking about. Um, we will attempt, we will state in your RFP that it is our intent to um, see our contractor use that type of service method of collection. I think you, especially as you move into your contract, further down the line, if somehow, some way, there is new technology, new, new whatever, that is a better idea, I think we should have a clause in there that says, you know, the police jury has the right or the ability to negotiate for a better way of doing business. And that's, that's the last little bit on that bullet. 
to allow you the opportunity to change your mind if for something something comes up uh, in the future that's a better way of doing it. Uh, of course, that would come with negotiations to your contract, and it would have to be beneficial to the parish. Um, the second bullet about the number of <coughs> personnel on the truck or in the truck, I, I, don't, I think we had some discussion on that. I don't really think that's important. I think those guys know what it take, know what it will take to fulfill the service, and uh, we'll leave that up to them. The last bullet is more or less uh, establishing intent. It's, it's pretty much, if you read, read your current manual, it's pretty much intended that they pick up everything on that route to the extent possible. And I think that's the type of service we've been getting. I think we'll uh, fine tune the, 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 the specs on that a little bit, so <coughs> suggesting that you know, all excess waste. That excess waste is what we're calling, it doesn't necessarily fit in the can. That's, that's a general term for almost all of it, besides the bulky waste. Uh, you know, to make every attempt to pick that up on that route, on that normal route, without a subsequent pass. And I think that's the way our service has been working. Uh, sure, there's going to be the occasion where they're going to need to send someone back, but hopefully that's the exception, not the rule. I think that would be our intent. The last thing, uh, or the next one, was the review panel. I think Ms. Griffin uh, had a very good point might need a tiebreaker somewhere down the line. So we've uh, asked Mr. Bickers to serve on the panel with us and uh, he agreed to. So uh, this is keeping with the pattern of basically using your directors, different departments uh, to serve on this panel. And really that's, believe it or not, I think the main issues and I believe we've um, focused in on the things that you asked for the most. If we miss something, we'll be happy to address that. <clears throat> and this, you know, last slide is about the next steps and we can, we can start taking questions now, I guess. Uh, Brian? I'm just, I'd like to add one thing before it's open for questions. On the, the method of collection issue, that really was a very honest, good debate. I think you could, we, we would normally probably argue or propose what we initially did last time which try not to tell somebody how to do the job set the standards um, but sometimes you don't want to be perfectly consistent and this is one where we really looked hard and some good points were made and we just have seen from experience that for our type contract it may not be for every everybody else around the state but for what we have, it really does work better, and we've seen it from experience. So that's why, for anybody who's not on the committee who maybe is going to ask later why we changed this, some of you obviously wanted to see this change, but for those who maybe wanted to leave it either way, th that's where we came from. So I think it's a good uh, point, but we, we, we did change after we got the input on that. Thank you, Brian. Uh, see, uh, Mr. Anderpont. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I think what we did tonight was pretty well uh, reiterate what we discussed at the last meeting. Um, there's no question that this body is uh, going to dictate policy from the RFP, okay? That puts everybody on a level playing field. I just want to reiterate one thing, that the people voted for a service. They did not vote for any particular uh, company to take over the, the solid waste pickup. Now, I think it was perfectly clear at the last meeting that when Ellis brought it up about, uh, and, and apparently y'all listened very well because uh, yes. uh, there's a different attitude about all of that tonight than there was the, uh, last time. But I think what we have to do is make sure that the service is no less than what we have been providing over the years. That's my position. Uh, uh, Ellis made it real clear that he didn't want any extra charges because you had a third can, and I and I wholeheartedly support that. Now, um, with all that being said, I want you to go back over for just a minute you, to insert a clause to do what now? 
excuse me, when we're talking about containers, right? Right. <clears throat> that from an existing residential uh, standpoint, let me try and get back to that slide. Existing residential standpoint, current customers, current service, if, that we would do a one-to-one -one exchange of cans. Let's, now, again, we're assuming a transition, but if you had two cans or three cans, we would exchange those. We would assume that the cans would not match. We're going to need new cans or we're going to need a different kind of can in that situation. That we would exchange those one-to-one. -one. So if you have one, we would give you a new one. If you had two or three, same deal. No, uh, no changes on your cost for your service. Again, most of these customers are, will be in two through eight, where the, it's all paid by sales tax. Anyway, no additional, no additional cost for that. Now, if we exchange you three cans, because you had three cans, and the next day you decided you needed a fourth, you would buy that fourth, just like we've talked about. So, everyone would keep the same level of service. I wouldn't suggest that we would be exchanging Lowe's cans for new cans. That, I don't think that was the intent. I, that, that, that's where we drew the line, I guess. Uh, in the new contract, uh, the way we're saying it would have to be containerized to be picked up, I would uh, say that the intent would be that that can gets picked up. So that's your existing uh, customer if you would new customers new homes coming onto the system just like today you get that first one free the service is free more or less I'm gonna use free as a loosely um, no additional cost if you want to buy your second can you can uh, you know there'll be a mechanism there same as we have right now to get an additional can no no charge for the service so uh, Really, all we've done is created a mechanism where we'll have to exchange existing cans for new cans or approved cans. Uh, I hope I answered your question. Partially. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I thought you mentioned something have a clause in there in case we can improve service some other kind of way after the contract has been <coughs> awarded to whomever. Oh, that would, oh, excuse me, that would be where we say, where we're agreeing that the manned, I'm going to use the term manned trucks would be utilized to service yeah. our contract. Yeah. We all agree that that's working best for us now. It has been. But if two years into this contract, a brand new truck comes along that we all agree is a better, even better way of doing it, I would insert a clause now that would allow you to change your mind and allow you to, again, you, you got to believe in that scenario. Your contractor would be coming to you saying, hey, we can do your service for much cheaper or cheaper, more efficient, better. There would be a negotiation at that point to change trucks. We wouldn't have the authority to tell them to change. I, I don't believe that would be uh, burdensome to the contract. We would have the right to negotiate for a change especially if we agreed that it was a better one. It's a little bit, uh, one of the things we don't want to do, I think intent would be early on, would not be to entertain going backwards from our current position. You know, every time you put a door that can have a crack in it, somebody next, you know, wants to go through it. So we wouldn't want just every month, every year, every time, all, all the time, take these uh, proposals. When we felt like there was a legitimate improvement could be made to the service, I think you'd have the ability to do it. Well, and I like that idea. I really do, and I think that pretty well supports what I said earlier, not to have any less service than we have provided in the past. And I think that well, I think you're right on target on that, Alan, as to uh, things change and uh, equipment improve over the years. And so uh, I like that, and with that, I yield. Thank you, Mr. Annapont. Mr. Hassan? Thank you, Mr. Trimmy. Um, Alan, thank you. Brian, thank you. I think um, I think y'all definitely followed the uh, continuing the level of service that that we asked for. Um, question, uh, just a quick question I have for you. Uh, and also, you you also solved the problem with those that have already purchased additional cans. 
would have an e even exchange. So uh, I think that's just a great way, way to uh, protect the public. Um, with the method of collection, I would imagine that if somebody had a Lowe's or a Home Depot Sam's Club can that they purchased that's being serviced now, they could expect that to still be serviced. That would be our intent. Okay. If you go back to the wording of your uh, manual, it says basically we're going to have approved containers that you should use. But for excess waste, you are allowed to put it there as long as it's containerized, bagged. You know, so that's where that's where the Lowe's can, if you would, can mm -hmm. fit into the definition of eligible waste. I think that was our biggest concern is just making sure we kept it containerized. So thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you, Ms. Hassan. Ms. Scott. I think we're well into the service level, but I have a few questions if you don't mind. Some yes, will be statements. Maybe I don't know where we where you want to put this, but it's just a couple thoughts. Um, when we go into one for one changing containers how how's that going to work i mean because it's unless you're taking those right then and they can't let their neighbor use it to get there so i hate to bring up some issues you know because I, I sometimes open a can of worms across the parish but how are you going to make sure that he ain't trading his container now that he's got his two new ones before the other ones can pick them up and i mean at what point do you stop i mean it can get kind of it could get kind of Crossways. We agree with you. Uh, <laughs> first yeah. off, gotta, I mean, hey, <clears throat> we uh, we we have looked. We, we we spent a lot of time thinking about how to do that. And I've actually talked to a number of places of how they do it. Uh, it's doable. We can do it. Uh, I'm sure there will be someone figure out a trick. But the uh, I want to tell you, we'll have a very high success rate at an accountability. To making that a one for one swap. All right, and with the with the new the new uh, sub service providers trying to bid this, how do they how are they going to get this number that they're needing to look for containers wise? Is this something that we're going to have in the RFP that you know when we put it out there, you're looking at about this many cans that are need to be provided? Yes, yeah, sir. Sure. I mean, we, we you know you can do the, do the math relatively quick. Uh, with our, let's just say, 30,000 households, then another 50% have uh, an extra can, another 10% has another can. So you can get down to a number relatively quick as an estimate. Our RFP says it is the responsibility of the contractor to get out there before they place their proposals to go ride the routes to make their own judgments. The numbers that we would provide under that scenario are for informational purposes only. So the burden is on them. <coughs> We are looking at, you know, we're going to have 120, maybe 160 days to pull off this transition. We are reviewing our options right now. Some of the things we want to uh, make the wisest decision, when you're going to need to purchase, again, uh, if you make a transition, this many cans, 40,000 cans plus, you get a pretty good bid price from anyone uh, when you buy that many of any unit. So we may look at doing that on a parish bid process. Uh, we may, I think that's our lean at this point, uh, to bid that out, get you the, get our citizens the best possible bang for their buck and, and to not put that option over into the contractor side of how much cost they pass on to us. We may control that process ourselves may help us with the logistics. I don't think there's any doubt that our contract will require our contractor to help with the logistics of changing out that can. They're gonna, they would be going to all those households too. So there is a lot of details. Uh, I think the one-to-one -one term uh, helps to identify, let you guys have a confidence that you know, that's our intent, but there's a lot of details to work out on how to do that and part of what the uh, transitional period will be about. Correct me if I'm wrong, but you're saying we might actually be the CAN provider through the parish? We could. That would, that's a possible way of getting the uh, best bid price on that CAN. Uh, again, we're, we're starting making these adjustments this week uh, based off of last week's meeting. So 
it's we're, we're figuring it out but I think that is the, one of the most viable options to get the best price it will leave our contractors in a position of a, a level or playing ground when when they're proposing to if we were to do that are we going to be the the we're going to take care of these cans. Is that going to be? No, on, or they no, will, we'll do it the first time and then they take it over. Or in just in in theory, we would provide that first can. The maintenance of the cans for the life of the contract is clearly in the contract. Okay. Let me just add, Mr. Scott, that because uh, there are, there are a lot of different things being tossed around. I know Alan did say it, but the key out of all of that is that through this, the parish through the sales tax would pay for those second or third cans not the resident mm -hmm. and we do have to work details as to whether do we own them does the, does the resident own them who services them those are all good questions but the key is they won't have to pay for them okay. that'll be paid for, from the tax all right now these are the kind of things that you might I don't know where you want to stick them but uh, will they <laughs> okay where you want to put them <laughs> Will they provide information on how they're going to dispose? Because some people are going to take it locally, some people are going to ship it out of state. Is that part of the RFP that we're going to know what they're actually going to do with the garbage? Yes, sir. Part of the, the one of the questions we will ask is their disposal plan. That's going to, uh, and where they're going to bring it to, if that's going to tell transfer stations. Again, all the equipment, everything that goes along with, from uh, cradle to grave service, really, of of the waste all right um, right now the jurors have a number to a route manager on the ground I don't know if that's going to be in the RFP but is this something that needs because right now we have a direct access when we have problems we don't have to go through staff is that something that's going to be written into this or is that going to be an understood hopefully it's not a problem that that's basically written into your contracting now from a service standpoint a service and a complaint mechanisms to address that 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 is already in the described in the RFP how we do it today okay. and um, the intent would be that when they propose they propose the same or similar method or just as efficient well right now I have a cell phone number of a route manager that I can call directly without having to go through the loop and that's kind of where I was going with that and the last thing when the citizens have a number that they have to call is it in the RFP as far as is it an out-of-state number is it a local number are they going to be talking to somebody that knows the area or how is that anywhere designed into this I did not at this point do not have a design that that necessarily be required to be a local number again I think the local rep uh, helps you and when, when the call gets to you the we we have a lot of things in there about the curve the customer service system that they will provide we're asking for again them to provide us with their plan on how they're going to do customer service we will read all those and, and value them um, we have the opportunity to negotiate in the contract phase also if we want something slightly different but um, to answer your question specifically I did not say that it had to only be a Lake Charles number that they must call uh, I suppose that's something that could happen all right well that's the end of my questions I think we're well on our way to providing a great service uh, something that's gonna at least be what it is today if not better in the future so thank you all for y'all's time thank you madam chairman thank you mr. Scott <coughs> mr. Staley uh, thank you mr. Chairman. Uh, First off, I just want to say that uh, the level of service is probably, no, not probably, it is the most important thing in this whole process. So let's just say that, um, that we do change providers, and a year down the road, it's not going well. The panel that, or the review panel, is that the final decision? No. Okay. We're the final decision. Okay. What is uh, in the RFP that uh, gives us that option to get out of the contract well in any contract that the pair the police jury has there's a significant piece of language that all you know to get out of those contracts if the service or the product or for whatever reason the contract is failing you know we have all the same things in there now uh, so you have adequate means to get out of a contract you have 
uh, clauses what in there. What do we have to take before we can get out of it? What, what kind of timeline are you talking about? Uh, I don't know off the top of my head. I have the. I can look it up. It, it's really a short timeline, all things short. considered. Let me, let me try to take a shot at that one. The, we've got built in what are called liquidated damages, which is really a progressive way of handling. For example, determining what is performance is usually going to come in little increments, missed routes, things like that. So we have a mechanism to uh, address violations when they happen without canceling contracts. If we continue to see that sort of problem and it's, it's, it's ongoing, it gets stiffer. At some point, if it came to that, the, the way it's worded, Tony, is that we would have a performance bond provision to, you know, I don't know the exact time, but the key is that we would be able to pay for that service for as long as it took to get a replacement company in there to do it, which I suspect would be within 90 to 120 okay, days. Well, that's quick. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Stelly. Ms. Griffin? Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, I just want to compliment the staff for uh, addressing all of the concerns that this committee brought to you. I I'm confident that with uh, the criteria we have set up, that we will be getting the same quality of service that we've always gotten. In reference to the cans, uh, and let me make it clear. Uh, the last thing I want to do is to try to tell a company how to perform and take care of the duties that they, they say they're going to provide for us with the contract we're going to get proven that they've passed the criteria that is met by your panel. So that's not what I want to do. I, I would like to see that the company that receives the contract would have numbers for the cans so that we won't have to worry about addressing Mr. Uh, Scott's concern about, you know, someone going out getting cans and, you know, we give them the first one or whatever, whatever. I'm sure they do. I think, I think that was discussed earlier, but are there, are, are there numbers on the cans so that they could be identified? Or? Yes, ma'am. In fact, most, almost, I think every can has a serial number. In fact, it's, it's actually not a little bitty serial number, it's a big one. So there's ways to track that. Yes, ma'am. So that's my concern. Again, uh, I know this committee, we've spent a lot of time on this, and I appreciate your addressing our concerns. I feel comfortable bringing it to the full jury. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Griffin. Uh, Mr. Uh, Bamey wanted to say something. Yes, thank you, Sandy. Just to go back for a second, one of Tony's questions, the, the way that we have proposed going forward with this, looking at the calendar and the process, the review panel, once this committee approves of the RFP, which we, we've pretty much gotten to that unless there's some other issues, the full jury would need to approve that next week. We would go through the RFP process, and then this panel would recommend a provider uh, to you, but we would come back to you probably sitting in committee is public works because it includes all of you. It's a big enough issue. It affects every corner of the parish and just go back to the full jury, probably through public works, through a committee because this pretty much falls under the, the big umbrella of public works. So I don't know if that was part of your question, but that's how we see this playing out. Mr. Stelly, yes. Yes, if I may. Um, and I'm going to ask you to go back, Alan, if you don't mind about the parish being the provider of the cans and you mentioned a level playing ground if you know for bidding purposes i'm sure is what you were talking about rather than us being the provider of the cans if if you want to figure out why don't we just give them the numbers of the cans and let them bid on that amount of cans as opposed to us being the provider of the can i think that's what that that is an option to to just get a bid price inside or a proposed price. Again, we're not we're not necessarily bidding this this service. We're proposing it. So rate is just a small factor or it's a significant twenty five percent, but cost is only a portion of your overall evaluation. So it's not a true bid in that aspect. We don't necessarily have in that method of, of deciding your overall provider uh, a means of necessarily getting the lowest price for that many cans. You may very well get it. Uh, 
you may not. It's it's a matter of what factors the the you know the, the proposers put on those values. By going by considering a mechanism where we do it in house, obviously we would bid that. We would know our our amount. Uh, we would have. In theory, ownership of the cans, which could provide you some uh, advantages in the future when it comes to your cans. If there was another transition, for instance, you may not have to do this again from a can standpoint if you own the cans. Uh, say you have a, a, a bad contract, for instance. I'm just providing an example, trying to show you some of the ways we think about it. If you have a bad contract, and if you go through a process where the can becomes property of the parish, if you transition again, you would have your cans. That would be one less cost that you would have to maybe incur. Communities do it all kind of ways. We're just trying to think of the best way, the cheapest way to provide that one-to-one -one transition. Um, you know, uh, the way you propose is, is definitely doable. We just we saw a few more advantages to thinking not doing it in-house. Uh, you can even provide a, a color can that's more for Calcasieu Parish, not necessarily the company. Uh, there's options there. Now, the, the current provider had a, a repair shop. I'm assuming they still do. So yes, sir. If we, go, if we are the provider of the can, you mentioned a while ago that we would not be responsible for repairing the cans. How, how would you do that? Just or like... Just like any other service that you contract out, essentially the maintenance of your can would be contracted out through this same uh, thing. So we would not, Public Works would not necessarily be in the can maintenance business, right, okay. but we would still own the can. There's pros and cons. I tell you, we have not settled on the most advantageous route of that yet. That's something we still have to kind of continue meeting on. The overall picture is one-to-one -one exchange, how we get there is, um, just trying to figure out the best price for all of us. Okay, thank you, Mr. Trump. Thank, thank you, Mr. Daly. Mr. Anderpont. Thank you, ma'am. Um, I don't want to rain on your parade, but I'm going to. I'm going to tell you, I think we're treading into an area we know nothing absolutely about. That would be like asking me to sit down in Alan Smith's chair and provide the knowledge that he has. I can't do it. And we're actually moving into another area where these people are professionals. They know what they're doing. They know how to operate these cans. They know what they have and to maintain them and that sort of thing. And I'm going to tell you what, if it ain't broke, let's don't fix it. I think the RFP ought to say it just like we have it right now. Uh, you provide the cans, you provide the service, and we're going to pay you accordingly, period. I, I, I can't support us going into the can business. I really can't. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Anderpont. Mr. Hassan. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I'm going to agree with Mr. Anderpon. I'm a little hesitant about supporting us purchasing the cans, but just to be clear, the RFP that you're proposing would basically ask for two different scenarios from the, from the uh, contractors, them providing the cans and them not providing the cans, and then we would, we would in turn also bid it, and y'all would see what what works best? Are you? No, sir. I not, not, have not intended to do it that way. I think we would rather decide one way or another and, and go forward with one option. Uh, there's pros and cons. I think I, I don't necessarily disagree with anything Mr. Anderpon said. Uh, in, in there's pros and cons to both ways. It's just trying to figure out the best way to buy 40,000 cans, the cheapest way to buy them. Uh, you know, we, we really don't want to be in the can business after we would get them bought, get them exchanged. Again, uh, the exchange, the actual transact, the, tr the trading out of the cans would be a service that was provided by the contractor. We have that language prepared. So it's just who buys the can and, and who actually uh, purchases it. After that, the can would be used by our contractor for the one-to-one -one swap, uh, additional cans going forward after this original transition, we, we probably would be totally out of that. Uh, we're just talking about this one time, you know, 40,000 plus can purchase, possibly trying to do it the cheapest way. 
allowing the contractors to provide that in the service. Uh, we just, you know, we just, like I said, we're just weighing out whether we can buy them cheaper or they can buy them cheaper, I guess, at this point. Uh, that's the debate, and, and it's a fair one. I guess, in my opinion, they can buy them cheaper because most of the companies I think we're talking about are buying 400,000 or, or, you know, in quantities like that for most of the size of those companies. Uh, I have to agree with Mr. Anderpon. I don't want to see us getting into that business. And we really won't know prior to the RFP. We, we may have an estimation, but we really won't know if we were better off. I think just what you said earlier, it's all of the contractor's responsibility to ride the routes, see what it takes to provide the service, see how many cans this is going to be need, need to be swapped out. And I might be riding routes for a couple of weeks to get a good Good, get a good feel for that, that's their responsibility, not ours. And uh, I think we're going to have enough contractors where we're going to have a very competitive situation, so that's something that they're going to factor in. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Hassan. Ms. Griffin. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I thought I was just about finished until you started talking about the uh, purchasing of the, of the cans. I, I definitely don't see a need for that. And you said you would like to see if the cost would be cheaper, cheaper to the taxpayers? Yes, ma'am. Is that what we're talking about? Uh, what about your staff? Would that put additional work on our staff to go out and start doing that type of work? Would it? Would you have to add more staff if yeah. you would do this? No, ma'am. Again, I think the way I would envision setting it up, you would run through a bid or a purchase process, your normal purchase process, where the delivery of that can would be to the contractor's designated site to be used in a transitional process to swap out one to one. I, I really never envisioned us opening up a warehouse or having people doing dealing with cans or anything like that other than the purchase of the can direct through our process. Okay. Well, since it was that simple, uh, I, I would like to see that idea dropped. Uh, that's personally. But uh, when the RFP uh, is written, I, I would like to see that uh, perhaps it's indicated. If we're going to uh, give out a contract, I think they should be able to perform everything that we need, and it should be stipulated in the contract that we give out mm -hmm. so that we wouldn't have to be involved. That, that's my opinion, and okay. uh, I can't support the parish purchasing that. I don't see the benefit. So thank you. Thank you, madam. Thank you, Ms. Griffin. Uh, Mr. Let, me, Bain. let me address that a bit. We, we are not going to recommend that <laughs> tonight. Uh, I don't. I haven't been sold on that yet. I think Alan is being very upfront that we're looking at. We have a little bit of luxury to decide that. The key of, of all of this is that because it's a one-time cost, biggie, but it's one-time cost, it's a transitional cost, we didn't want that to get muddied up with the monthly service that's year-round. So when we say purchase it, it's paid for with the tax. Whether we own the can or not is really the issue. And I, Either way, we're going to work with the, whoever the provider is, if it changes, to, to purchase those at the best rate we can. That, the whole issue of repair and all, there's a lot of good sense not get involved in that. We're just going to look at it and just be clear that we're not recommending that tonight. Thank you, Mr. Scott. I think this is getting into what I was kind of asking about in the beginning. I was worried about a new provider, if that would be the case, going out and having to drop off the cans and the old provider not having picked up theirs yet and then being able to just give one of their cans down the road to somebody else before the new provider. Uh, that's, so this is what you're trying to prevent. Or we're saying when you take, we're going to take the new cans or how are we going to, right then and there, are we going to get rid of cans? They're not going to have both companies' cans at the same time. Those transitions are made in a way you know, street by street, house by house, immediate swap. Okay. There's very little opportunity to grab one back off the trailer and run it down the block and get That's it reused. So <laughs> Thank they you, can Scott. do that. All right. Are, are there any other questions? I, I think we've had, uh, I, I appreciate this, uh, this committee. This committee's done a wonderful job. I've been honored to uh, serve. I need to uh, 
to ask Mr. Atherton uh, to come up uh, unless you ha do you have something else to say? No, ma'am. All right. I'm good. Thank you, Alan. Mr. Charlie, will you tell us? Uh, we know where you live, but we just <laughs> love to hear it. <laughs> Charlie Atherton, 122 Pine Street. I always uh, appreciate being well received by the jury, and, and you tolerate me very well. And I always appreciate that. Uh, I'm encouraged uh, uh, from what I'm hearing about, you know, uh, the initial concern with providing the same level of service. The people knew the cost and the level of service that they're getting, and trust me, they don't view this particular system as being broken. So, uh, but but I did want to mention, you know, the fact that if there's trash, people are going to dispose of it somewhere. And being involved originally, the biggest benefit of the trash pickup tax, you know, when, it, when we originally got it passed, was the reduced flooding because the tax allowed the, the cleaning up of the entire parish drainage system. And that, that seems somewhere to get, to, you know, to get lost in the mix. But basically what you're doing right now is trying to maintain the, the cleanliness of your existing parish drainage system and your, and your main laterals because you don't see what we saw you know, when we first you know, saw that. <clears throat> now having said that, I, I wholeheartedly agree and support with what Mr. Selly, the point Mr. Selly brought up. Uh, we, we would like to ensure that, uh, that the contract has some real teeth in it and it would allow for some timely correction if something's not working out we would prefer to see action taken and, and the problem addressed before the main laterals and drainage districts, you know, make it all the way to Shoepick with refrigerators and couches and stuff like that. So I, I have not read the, the proposal, but I would ask that you as a committee ensure that the language in there and the teeth are strong enough to, to, to make sure if there's a problem that it, it can be corrected b before it gets out of hand. <coughs> uh, and I guess just the, just the point that you've already alluded to is basically the number of cans is really immaterial because the thought process is when the people buy the trash, they've already paid to dispose of it. And what your parish litter program encourages is for people to take that trash that's already paid to dispose of it and put it in a can so it can be properly disposed of and not go into ditches. So, again, I, I, I do appreciate uh, the open and candid and pretty blunt uh, discussion, which always results in uh, the, the, the best benefit to the public. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Charlie. You got questions? I'll be happy to answer them. I know you We know you got all program. the answers. That's why I wanted you up here. <laughs> Thank no, you. thank you, uh, and I know that you uh, didn't have been to all of them, but this has been a wonderful committee to work with, and they have been uh, right on with their thinking, and I'm hoping that the rest of the jurors uh, feel like we have also. I see uh, some of uh, some some of our jurors that are here. Uh, that do, is there anything that you would like to say before this committee, or you just want to punt? Till later. They punt. All right. Okay. Well, then, uh, Brian, is there anything else? Just uh, as far as what we're asking from the committee, if you feel that the, these latest recommendations, which is based on your input, are satisfactory, we would ask that we recommend they be incorporated and that this this be. Can I have a, a motion to that? Second. There's been a motion by Ms. Griffin, a second by Mr. Hassan. Uh, that these things be incorporated in that have been brought before us today in in our RFP process and that the RFP process continue on and uh, the the next big meeting next will week. be April 7th next week so uh, our staff has done a terrific job and they still have more work to do so uh, thank you all uh, do I hear a motion, motion to, adjourn? to adjourn second thank you 2011 will now come to order. Um, <laughs> roll call, Madam Secretary. Sir, Mr. Andrepont? Here. President Brain? Here. Mr. Collins? Here. Mr. Farnham? Here. Mr. Griffin? Present. Mr. Guidry? Here. Oh, I thought so. Mr. Hassan? Here. Here. Vice Chairman Landry? Here. Dr. Mackey? Present. Mr. McMillan? Here. Mr. 
restaurant? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You throw in the drawers. Mr. Spale? Here. Mr. Sias? Present. Mrs. Trimmy? Here. And Chairman Skelly? Here. Uh, item number three, presentation of a trophy and certificates to the Starks High School girls basketball team and coaches in recognition of a successful season and winning the 2011 Class C Basketball State Championship. Mrs. Trimmy. I'm honored and excited for these girls. Now, understand. How many girls we have on the um, on the basketball team? Thirteen. The three that you see <coughs> here tonight are the three that don't play softball. <laughs> <laughs> the other ten are on the up and coming state championship softball team. Okay, and they're playing tonight. And they had softball games every Thursday night way through April. So uh, there was no way we were going to get all of them here at one time. But I want to introduce you. Where's my little folder here? <laughs> Where'd he get it? I want to introduce you to those women. Angie, uh, if you would come up and, uh, and also uh, introduce the girls that are here. But then I have a list of all of them that I'd like to uh, acknowledge. Okay? So that we can get this on record, all right? Yeah. Um, I don't know who's, who's been We also have two girls that are seniors. Yes. And they're going on to better things, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, um, we had two seniors this year. One of them was Bailey Bustle. She was our guard. She's chose to go to McNeese. She signed early to go on a softball scholarship. And our other senior was Casey Willis, who played uh, forward for us. Yeah, and she's my daughter. And she's going to Louisiana College on a basketball, to play basketball. And then um, we had three juniors. They're all two. One of them is here, Cassie Hyde. And we had two others, Emily Ingalls and Leah Clark. And then we had a sophomore, one sophomore. She was selected the outstanding player, the uh, top 28, Sierra Bussell. We um, had two freshmen, Jeremy Barlow and then Lexi, who's with us. We had three eighth graders, Wendy Gillette, Jade Berry, and Megan Norwood. And we had two seventh graders, and one of those is with us, Hannah Ingalls and Ashlyn Gibson. That, that I'm real. The ones uh, that are uh, juniors and seniors and sophomores, just to let you know, they started playing in the sixth grade, high school ball. Mm -hmm. So, and, and same for these girls also. They've been playing. So when they get to be a freshman, They've already been there, done that, okay? So, uh, and one of the things uh, I'm so proud about is also not only the athletic part of uh, Starks High School, but uh, Starks is, is based on uh, church and school. And, and that, is, that is the makeup of that community. And they support their kids uh, and we all support our kids, but when you have a small uh, community like like they do in Starks and like in Bell City Hayes and other areas that that have schools, then that's what their backbone is, <coughs> and the backbone for Starks is their schools. So uh, one of the things that I did want to uh, let you know is that academics is also very important in Starks High School, and that. Uh, According to the Lake Charles American Press that I read, Starks High School had the highest test scores in Calcasieu Parish. So I also uh, want to let you know that academically, they're on the top shelf. So I think uh, not only from the athletic part, but the scholastic part, they excel in every way. All five of my starters are beta members. All five of her starters belong to beta. So 
they're, they're not only that, they're 4.0 and they're moving on to better things in life. So uh, I'm so proud of these young people. And uh, I'm going to ask you, Angie, these are the certificates. Now, what we usually like to do is we'll take a picture with us with the certificates. Of course, it doesn't really matter which one we hold up, I think, because uh, not all of the girls are here. So we do need to get a picture. But before I, I want you to give them a, a you know, certificate, and then we'll, uh, then what I want to do before we take the picture is present you with this trophy. On behalf of the Calcasieu Parish Police Jury, and it's our honor to present you with this trophy on the milestone of being state champions for uh, basketball for the state of Louisiana and representing Calcasieu Parish and I don't know that this year that any we've that so far that we've had any other of our teams in Calcasieu Parish to win a state championship for this year. So uh, thank you for representing Calcasieu well and representing your community well and young people. What everybody talks, you know, down about young people, that's what it's all about. It's about these kind of young people that bring us all up and make us all look good. So thank you so much. Thank y'all. Hold on. Mr. Mr. Andrew Pond, do you want to wait until after the picture to make yeah. your comment? Thank you all so much. We appreciate it. Oh, wait. I was going to say one more thing. <laughs> oh, no. I, I just wanted to, uh, you know, the last time Hal and Kevin played basketball, they left with a, a, a boot on their foot. And I'm, I'm going to uh, challenge them a one-on-one with my Starks high school basketball team. I'm out. <laughs> You're out. <laughs> Good, Sandy. <laughs> <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> let me just let me just say that my hat goes off to you to be able to uh, achieve the highest award that you can get in the state, particularly with the, the, the participants that you have and that are so young and playing with just a handful of uh, seniors and juniors and that sort of thing. But when you start <laughs> start thinking about it, when you got seventh graders playing. Uh, that's something uh, my hat goes off to you. You have to know something that, a lot more than I know about basketball. And <laughs> I probably know as much as Hal, which is not a whole lot. <laughs> but uh, anyway, congratulations. Yeah. And what class, class what class are you? Class C. C? Yes, okay. Sir. That concludes my. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Yeah. Good, luck to you. You. Good luck, girls. Item number four is receive report from staff with reference to the I 10 bridge lighting project. Mr. Connor. Yes, sir. Um, I contacted the city of uh, Lake Charles this past week, talked to Mr. Edwards, and uh, just to get an update for y'all to see where things were at. And uh, they did have a meeting this past Tuesday. They met at the bridge. Uh, Mr. Lechtenberg, who is the uh, electrical engineer that represents the city, and the uh, lighting manufacturers came down and they walked the bridge. And uh, basically, after uh, meeting, they concluded that they didn't see any problem. They were confident that their lighting design would work well in that environment. So they're going to be finalizing that data and uh, sending that to the Department of Transportation for their review and approval, which then would allow for the five to seven fixtures to be installed and for the pilot project and uh, would hopefully be well on our way to uh, getting this project completed. So. Um, does anyone have any questions for Mr. Connor? Uh, Mr. Anderpoint. 
Did they give you any? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Did they give you any kind of uh, window of opportunity, or uh, how long we're talking about here? No, I didn't get a, an answer to that. They, but uh, they said they'd try to get it together as soon as possible and get it to the department. So uh, they, they understand that the uh, there, no, there's a rush on this. So. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Move to receive report. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Spell and a second by uh, Mr. Hassan. Is there any other discussion? Any objection? Hearing none, the report is received. Item five, consideration of making a recommendation with reference to adopting the following resolutions regarding a non-parish maintained second. public road known, ne, known as unnamed road off Cooley Road. I have a motion by Mrs. Trimmy and a second by Mrs. Griffin. Is there any discussion? Any objection? Hearing none, item five carries. Uh, is that all? Yes. Uh, five, is that all bullets, Mrs. Trimmy? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Five one is adopt a resolution authorizing the president of the police jury to execute the necessary documents for donation of right away from uh, the various property owners. 5 2, adopt a resolution accepting a non parish maintained road note. Why is that? Uh... Actually, uh, one of them is off of Cooley Road. Uh, would you look at this, Tim? And the other one is off of uh, one of the Sandy Lane. Correct. There's two roads. There's two roads. Okay. We have to do 5.2. Adopt a resolution accepting a non parish maintained public road known as unnamed road. Uh, off Cooley Road for future parish maintenance and adopting an ordinance to pr remove said road from the master private road list and further naming it Wilkins Road. Uh, Mrs. Griffin. Thank you, sir. I guess I, I need a little explanation on the non parish maintenance. If it's a non parish road. Th these are, if I may. I'm going to let Tim. These are roads that were on a private road list uh, that allowed, that they were recognized as roads where there was homes and uh, where they could get building permits. And this is to try to control, I guess to some extent, uh, private road development within the parish. Uh, these roads were uh, on a list back in when 2002 sales tax was passed that there was a program where some of these roads that met criteria that was passed by this police jury that we could go in and give them the opportunity to become a public maintained road. Although it does serve a public purpose, they were not publicly maintained. And uh, these are two of those roads uh, that were on that list and they've met all the criteria and uh, will be uh, surfaced shortly after uh, we take maintenance over. May I? Sure. And so do the uh, residents on this non-parish road pay any taxes to receive the services that they're going to be receiving from the parish? They'll pay property taxes, I, I assume, just like you know other residents would. In reference to getting the road uh, uh, garbage collection and everything else that our regular citizens do, will they still be obligated to? They'll be uh, obligated just like any other citizen. OK. Yes, I guess my. <clears throat> My concern when I asked the question was a nun parish. So thank you so much, sir. Thank you, Mrs. Griffin. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, uh, item five and all bullets carry. Item six, consideration of making a recommendation with reference to adopting the following resolutions <coughs> regarding a non parish maintained public road known as East Sandy Lane number one. Oh. Okay, so move. Thank you. I have a motion by Mrs. Trimmy and a second by uh, Mr. Brame. Is there any discussion? Any objection? Hearing none, item six carries. Item six one. Yep. Item six one, is that all bullets, Mr. Trimmy? Yes. Item six one is adopt the resolution authorizing the president of the police jury to execute the necessary documents for donation of right away from various property owners. Item 6-2, adopt a resolution accepting a non-parish maintained public road known as East Sandy Lane Number 1 for future parish maintenance and adopting an ordinance to remove said road from the master private road list and further naming it Gerald Lynn Lane. Yes. Is there any other discussion? Any objection? Hearing none. Item 6 and all bullets carry. Item 7, 
consideration of making a recommendation with calc with reference to accepting Calc Shoe Parish Move. Project Number 2010-09 as being substantially complete. Had a motion by Mr. Andrepont and a second by Mr. Um, Hornum. Is there any other discussion? Any objection? Hearing none, item seven carries. Item eight, consideration of making a recommendation with reference to adopting a resolution authorizing the Director of Animal Services to alter the adoption fees for cats and dogs on April 30, 30, 2011 as part of the worldwide pet adoption. Adopt-a-thon. Adopt-a-thon, I'm sorry. Worldwide pet adopt-a-thon. Did I get a motion? Yeah, we got a motion. Second. second. We have a motion by Mr. Landry and a second by Mr. McMillan. Is there any discussion? Any objection? Hearing none, item eight carries. I, uh, item nine is uh, an advise that the animal rabies clinics will be held as follows. Burton Coliseum, uh, Saturday, 7 a.m. Uh, the 1 p.m. And so for high school, Saturday, 7 a.m. to 1 p.m. on April 16th. Burton Coliseum is April 2nd. Uh, so for high school, April 16th. That's just an advice. Any other matters for consideration? Yes, sir. Oh, nope. sorry, Mr. Underpong. May I address staff? You may. Uh, Mr. Connor, one of my constituents asked about a bridge that is uh, presently out around the Starks area, and I, and I have no idea geographically where that bridge is. You know what I'm talking about? Yes, sir, I know what you're talking about. And he wants to know if we're going to reopen it or is it permanently closed or whatever. Well, at this time, it, there are several other bridges that have a higher priority because of the volume of traffic that they carry. That bridge is over 100 feet long, and the expense of that, because it serves primarily maybe some logging and some hunting interest, and uh, because of uh, we have some other needs that have higher priority, it, um, we're going to address those. Not to say that this will not be addressed in the future, but right now it's priority-wise, there's just uh, way down the list. <coughs> Is that a good pretty way far to put down? It? Yes, sir. Okay. Have any idea? Five years, ten years? I'd say at least five years out. At least five years. I will convey the message. All right. I'll just be glad. Messenger. To, and I'll be glad to meet with them and discuss it in more detail if they want to call the office. If he's interested, I'll pass it on. All right. Thank, thank you. you, Tim. Thank you, Mr. Thank Chairman. No, well, Ms. Tremier wants you. No, no, I don't want to. I changed my mind. <laughs> Need a motion to adjourn. Second. Right, Got a motion by Dr. Mack and second by Mr. Size. We're adjourned. Now call to order the agenda committee committee <laughs> meeting for March 31st. The purpose of today's committee meeting is to formulate an agenda for the regular meeting of the police jury on April 7, 2011. The proposed agenda is a, as follows. I now entertain a motion to pull items 24 oh, through 26. Second. I have a motion for Mr. Guidry and a second by Mr. Ellis. <laughs> Item number 24, take appropriate action to fill a vacancy created by the resignation of Mr. Charles Broussard as a member of the Board of Commissioners of, of Community Center and Playground District number 3 of Ward 7. Mr. Hassan is the liaison and he recommends that Mr. Terry Cormier be appointed. Move to appoint Mr. Terry second. Cormier. I have a motion to appoint Mr. Terry Cormier by Mr. Hassan and a second by Mr. Guidry. Any objection? Any discussion? So moved. Take a pro number 25, take appropriate action to fill a vacancy created by the resignation of Mr. Rodney Fry as a member of the Board of Commissioners of Waterworks District Number 8 Move of Wards to, uh, 3 and 8. Second. Bernard Mr. Stelly is a li liaison and he recommends that Mr. Bernard Habits be appointed. I have a motion to, re to appoint by Mr. Stelly and a second by Dr. Mackey. I have any objection? Any discussion? So moved. Number 26, take appropriate. 
didn't you shush me a while ago? I need to do the same thing. <laughs> Take appropriate action to fill a vacancy created by the resignation of Mr. Stanley Lewis as a member of the Board of Commissioners of Waterworks District Number 5 of Wards 3 and 8. Mr. Sias recommends that Mr. Kenneth George be appointed. I have a motion to appoint Mr. Kenneth George by Mr. Sias, a second by Mr. Landry. Have any objection? Any discussion? So moved. Uh, Mr. Beam. Uh, yes, Mr. Scott, we have an add-on. If there's no others from the jury, we would like for you to consider. And I can just read it out if you're ready. Want to read it out before we take the motion? Yeah. Right. Um, it came from the West Cal Community Center Authority, and it is for um, formality of approving it to go forward on consideration of adopting a resolution approving issuance by the Louisiana Local Government Environmental Facilities and Community Development Authority of not to exceed $7,750,000 in the hotel motel tax revenue bonds to the West Cal Parish Community Center Authority project for development of an events and community center by the authority. So moved. Second. Second. This came yeah. from, from Mr. J. Delafield on behalf of the Community Center Authority. All right, we have a motion to accept the add-on by Mrs. Trimmy. We have a second by Mr. Hassan. Do we have any discussion? Any objection? So moved. I'll now entertain a motion to adjourn. I have so a moved. motion to adjourn by Dr. Mackey. So